Hello, in this lecture, we're going to work some test type problems, problems that are short enough to fit in multiple choice type questions. First, we have a company must repay the bank a single payment of 21,000 cash in two years for a loan it entered into. The loan is at 10% interest compounded annually. The present value factor for two years at 10% is 0.8264. The present value of the loan is what? So we have, we have the loan that we're going to pay back. What would be the present value basically after two years considering a 10% interest rate? Now the easiest way to do this would basically be to look at a table in order to find the, the rate here, the present value factor, which they gave us. So we don't need the table right now. So they made it pretty straightforward in the multiple choice question. We're just going to take that 21,000. And since it's two years time, and if we looked up in the table and they said that it was a two years at 10% and they gave us the factor of 0.8264, then I'm going to go ahead and add decimals. Go to the home tab, numbers, add four decimals. Going to underline home tab, font, underline. Then we're just going to say this equals the 21,000 times the factor that was given to us. And so therefore, the present value, today's value of the seven is 17,354 if we were to pay back the loan of 21,000 after two years at 10%. Next one says a company borrowed cash from the bank by signing a seven year 8% installment note. The present value of an annuity factor at 8% for seven years is 5.7064. Each annual payment is 42,255 and 69 cents. The present value of the note is what? So we have kind of the opposite here now. Now we have basically an annuity. As long as the annuity is constant, then once again, the easiest way to do that is to look at the annuity table and figure out what uh, the value would be. And they gave us that factor again, assuming the 8% seven years, we're, we're gonna have the uh, 5.2065. So now we have constant payments of 42255.69. I'm gonna go, I'm gonna highlight all of these and go to the home tab numbers add the pennies onto that and then we're just going to multiply that times the 5.2064 that's the amount we would find in uh, an annuity table based on seven years if we found the the table would have seven years and then eight percent and that would be at that section we're going to go to the home tab we're going to go numbers we're going to add the decimals so we can see all those decimals going to go to the home tab font underline that and then we'll just multiply that out 42 255 69 times 5.2064 and we get a number too large for the cell which happens to be 222 220,000 and uh two cents next one says a company purchased equipment and signed a six-year installment loan at 10 percent annual interest the annual payments equal 5200 the present value of an annuity factor for six years at 10 percent is 4.3550 the present value of the loan is what so once again we have this even payments of 5200 easiest way to figure that out is to look at an annuity table and look at the columns or and columns and rows intersecting between six years and ten percent and we're going to get a number greater than one because uh it's going to be bigger because it's an annuity payment and we're going to have an even number of these payments at 5,200 for six years. So again, you would think you'd multiply times six, but it's going to be less than six, the factor, because of course of the fact that there's 10% uh, of, of interest or value in, in here. So we're going to take the 5,200, multiply it times the factor. They just gave us the factor from the table being 4.355. I'm going to go into the home tab, numbers, add decimals like that. We're going to go into the home tab, font, underline, multiply this out. We're going to say the 5,200 times the 4.355 gives us this uh, 22,646. And again, the, the, the instinct would be if there was no uh, interest factor here, would be just to take this and say, well, if there's going to be six years and there's six payments, it should be 5,002 times six. But that's not the present value because of the fact of this time value money or, or the, this rate that we're going to have for the present value, which is going to be, of course, less than the actual dollar amount. 
Next one says assets of 32,612,000, total liabilities of 19,462,000 and total equity of 13,150,000. The debt to uh, the debt to equity ratio for the period is what? So the debt to equity ratio is, is pretty easy to calculate. It actually tells you exactly what it is. It's debt over equity. It's a ratio. It's the debt compared to the equity. So we're going to say the debt then equals the liabilities of 19462000 and the equity equity is going to be this 13150000 and if we divide those out I'm going to underline home tab font underline and we're going to compare the debt the 19462 over divided by ratio the equity 13150 and we come up not to 1 because we're going to go to the home tab numbers add some decimals so notice the debt is greater than the equity. Remember what the equity represents. Assets minus liabilities equals equity. It's kind of like the book value of the company. And uh, therefore the debt is greater than, uh, than the equity in the company. Now, note that we have three zeros here. And, and if you wanted to round this, since we're talking about millions of dollars and it's probably okay to round it and, and it's even in terms of thousands. So if you just plug in this into a calculator quickly, it would be fine to say 19462 over 13150 dividing each side by the thousand in this case dropping those zeros off because they're just zeros and we take the 19462 divided by the 13150 and add decimals and we would then get the same number.